Hey, what up guys? Welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to talk about what happens when a soft fork occurs and what happens when a hard fork occurs. So yesterday, guys, we did a video on Ice Age and um, you guys have been wondering what happens to your coins when a hard fork occurs in Ethereum, for example. And first of all, we need to, we need to understand that the concept of a hard fork and the, co and the concept of a soft fork, they are universal across different blockchains. So it's not only Ethereum that can hard fork or soft fork, any blockchain can do that. And uh, first of all, we need to understand what is the difference between a soft and a hard fork. And you can think about it this way. When you are developing a blockchain, let's imagine that we are Ethereum developers, that we are the Ethereum foundation. Sometimes we need to release updates to our protocol. Maybe there is some vulnerability that has been detected. Maybe there is some new feature we have developed that we want to release into the public. And so our question becomes, how can we do that? Because as we know, it's all decentralized and we can't just press a button and force everyone to upgrade like Microsoft can when they just like shut down your Windows machine and update it for you. Uh, there is no such mechanism. So the, we, we as blockchain developers, if we have some kind of blockchain that we maintain and we add features to it, we have two different ways of updating our blockchain. We can do a soft fork or a hard fork and those are the two conventional ways now new blockchains are coming such as tezos and tezos will have other mechanisms for up updating but the two traditional ways is either to do a soft fork or a hard fork what does it mean let's start with the soft fork when we do a soft fork we release a new client so the miners and the users all can download our new client. The people who download our new, for example, Ethereum client, we release, let, let's imagine that we are the Ethereum developers. We release a new Ethereum client and people can start uh, up updating. If it is a soft fork, uh, that means that people who update will be able to communicate with people who didn't update. So if I haven't upgraded, but all of you guys have upgra upgraded, I will still be able to send and receive coins to you and from you. You may have some addi additional features in your client because you have updated. So you, you might have some benefits that I don't have. However, this doesn't stop us from communicating and we're still a part of uh, the same chain. So when we talk about a soft fork, there is really no split in the network. And therefore, if you have some kind of minor update, you really, really want to do a soft fork and not a hard fork. And so uh, that is something you need to keep in mind when you're developing a blockchain protocol. You want to make it uh, easily upgradable without breaking the uh, communication between clients. Of course, sometimes you actually need to upgrade the protocol like Ethereum will do. Uh, they need to switch the consensus algor algorithm from proof of work to proof of stake and that will require a hard fork. But as, as long as it's possible, we should do a soft fork because when we do a soft fork, people can upgrade, but people who upgrade can still communicate with people who didn't upgrade and the network doesn't split. So that was the soft fork. You can, you can also think about the soft fork uh, as uh, Word documents. For example, there is Word 2007 documents, but they can still be opened with newer versions of Word. So the, this newer version of Word uh, files might have some additional features. You can do more advanced things when you write your documents, but they're still able to communicate with older versions of Word. So that is an example of a soft fork. Uh, right, so now we understand a soft fork. We update, but we still can communicate, even if some people didn't upgrade. A hard fork is quite the opposite. Whenever someone updates, they 
lose the connection to everyone who didn't update. So if you guys update, but I don't update, I will not be able to send coins uh, to you on your new uh, client. However, I will be able to send coins to you on the old chain. So what? how does a hard fork really, uh, really work? Because it creates basically two different coins. So if Ethereum would have a hard fork, there will be this one chain that is the original chain. But the hard forked version will create a parallel running chain and they will be identical up to the point where the hard fork happens. So like if I try with my hands, it will look something like this, right? So they are identical up to here. So let, let's imagine that this is like the original chain. It goes up to here, but here they split. And so this chain would have the blocks from here down to here. <laughs> it's very pedagogical. Uh, and this chain would have blocks from here down to here. So we, have, we will have two identical chains and uh, up to a single point. Like so here they split and they become different chains. And so if I'm on this chain, the old chain, I will be able to send you coins to your account in the old chain. And if I am on the new chain, I will be able to send the coins from my new account to your new account. And if you have, for example, 10 Ether in, uh, from the beginning and this split happens, you will have 10 Ether in both of these chains. So you will have an equal amount of coins in both chains because they are identical up to a single point. So like here, <laughs> right after the split, you would have your account would, would look identically on both chains. Now, if you do some transactions on this chain, however, after the split, those transactions will not be valid on the old chain and vice versa. So up to this fork, up to the hard fork, you will have an equal amount of coins in both chains when they split, uh, when they split and when uh, they continue running in parallel when they are separate and you do some transactions here, they will not be visible here and vice versa. Uh, so yeah, you would have an equal amount of coins. Now, what, what will happen to the price? Uh, as always, this is not a price channel and uh, if I think about basic economics, we would have twice as many coins, meaning that there will be more coins in circulation and this will lead to inflation. Also, the price might drop even more because now we have two separate chains. So like if the old chain survives, if everyone doesn't switch to the new chain and we have two competing chains like like now we have ethereum classic and ethereum that might drop the price of the coins even more because now there is um, this um, uh, this split and the community that once was an ethereum community now is split into two and um, so it's um, I mean it's, it's hard to predict the market will give it will give the coins some kind of price uh, it will depend on the development team and the technical leadership and all of that but on a technical level you will have the equal am amount of coins in the old chain as in the new chain and uh, like what we what Ethereum Foundation hopes is that when they do this hard fork that everyone is just going to switch to the new fork and this old coin, this old uh, blockchain will just be forgotten. Uh, but that might not um, happen, for example, as it didn't in the DAO uh, hard fork. So that is how hard forks work. They basically create a new chain that looks identical as the old chain up to the single point where the hard fork happens and then they go their separate ways. And if you do transactions on the old chain, they will not be visible on the new chain and vice versa. Um, yeah, guys, that is how hard fork and soft fork uh, work, work uh, forks work. So 
leave your comments in the comment section below did you understand this or did you not also guys i did uh, a very similar video to this a while back ago i will link it uh, up so if you didn't understand this video maybe you can watch the previous one when i basically tell the same thing but not in the context of uh, ethereum uh, as in this one so that's it guys leave your comments if you understood understood and leave your comments if you didn't understand uh, and if you're a new viewer and you like blockchain you like ethereum bitcoin decentralization all of these new projects that are launching on the ethereum blockchain you should definitely subscribe to the channel guys because you will find it interesting i myself am a software developer and i post videos every single day guys so today we talked about the soft and hard forks uh, in a soft fork the community doesn't split we still are on the same chain uh, and we can communicate in uh, just as usual but people who upgrade might get additional features and if we do hard fork people who upgrade basically to basically jump to a parallel chain and if the old chain survives if there is still people using it we might end up with two different coins that are that will be uh, developed parallel in parallel uh, and so technically when you do a hard fork you create a new coin and the hopes of the ethereum foundation and the bitcoin developers whenever someone does a hard fork they always hope that people will just switch to this new fork and not continue mining the old fork because we don't want to have a splitting community we don't actually want to have two different coins that each survive in each hard fork uh, if you look from the perspective of a developer of ethereum foundation or bitcoin bitcoin core developers so that is how it works. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.